Hello, my name is Steve Blanchard and um, welcome to the course, online course Sociology of Health. I am the uh, instructor for the course. I thought I'd like to take a, a few minutes, chat, and uh, talk about a couple of things. Um, tell you a little bit about myself and then uh, talk a little bit about the course. This is an introduction uh, to the course uh, video short. Uh, the, the actual video for the first week of the semester will be a little more lengthy than this. This is just uh, kind of highlight some issues for you to get you acquainted. Um, I've been with the university about 20 years. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Texas in Austin, uh, the Population Research Center there. I'm a demographer by formal training, I guess you'd say. I uh, was affiliated with the sociology department there, so I'm also a sociologist. Um, the field of, or the area of emphasis in my uh, PhD is human ecology. Now, this is back in the 90s. And uh, human ecology is just like how you might imagine, the ecological view of uh, population um, dynamics. Um, what is there about context that influence uh, population change? Population change, the way we often define it and well in this course here in a minute, I'll talk a little more about it, is fertility, mortality, migration. We'll talk a little more about that in a few minutes. But I uh, had spent about uh, 20 years previous to that working as a social worker and a social work supervisor and responding to social urgencies as social workers do. And it seemed to me as time went by that I became more interested in the context that gave rise to those emergency situations. What was the context of family? What was the context of the neighborhood that influenced the family dynamics, that influenced uh, the social workers having to respond and all that sort of thing? So um, the ecological point of view was very, uh, very interesting to me. Um, I've taught this course, this is the first time I've taught it undergraduate. Uh, I've taught it well, for several years as a graduate class online. Um, it's a um, special studies, or not special studies, but a special topics course this fall because it is the first time offered, but we do expect it to be regularly offered uh, starting in the fall of 2014, just to be part of the undergraduate bulletin uh, with the title Sociology of Health and with its unique number uh, because we have good enrollment. There's 20 some odd of you uh, in this class. So we were expecting that, but uh, it's, it's nice to see. Um, I do social contextual work uh, sociology, the um, sociology, the perspective of sociology is about contextual influences on human behavior. In this course, we're going to take that particular behavior having to do with health or that leads to health outcomes. I do um, a lot of pro bono and sometimes paid, but mostly pro bono uh, in community uh, consultation work, mechanic. Uh, with my statistical background and methodology background, helping uh, community-based organizations and hospitals and metro health department come up with indicators of population health and how to measure them and, and that sort of thing and how to assess contexts that influence health and, and that. So I'm uh, not only coming at you theoretically, shall we say, but I am a practitioner. Um, I do what we're going to talk about. Um, all uh, semester. In fact, even the publications that I'm part of um, is about, the, the, the themes are about uh, con uh, context of health. So let's talk a little bit about the course. Um, social determinants health sounds pretty strong. I, I don't think uh, there's much in this world, uh, not even in particle physics anymore, in the physical science of the continuum, that science continuum that is that determinant. Uh, probably a better way to think about this is, uh, is social influences on health. Um, how does context, social context, how does the physical environmental context, uh, pollutants, in, pollutants in the air, if you will, uh, how does temporal context changes events that happen in our lives, uh, like 9-11 that has transformed us into a highly surveillance society, how, how do those contexts, how do those influence us? But I think more than anything, uh, the, the principle that we're interested in here is how does the context influence health. We're going to do upstream, downstream kinds of things. Um, we're going to look at health profiles, uh, rates and proportions of 
disease and mortality, but we're going to want to think of a little bit upstream. What were the behaviors that led to that profile? And we want to go a little farther upstream and look at the context that led to those behaviors that led to those profiles. So we do upstream and downstream in this class. And um, when we're upstream looking downstream, then we're predicting. If we know something about the context, we can predict the profile. If we're downstream at the profile and we're looking upstream, then the downstream profile is an indication or an indicator of behaviors and of context. And we'll talk about the value of that because the more we know about that upstream, then maybe we can influence change in the context that will then influence change in the behavior that will then influence change in the health profile, which is really what we'd like to do, right? Reduce mortality, improve child survival, and all of that. So that's really uh, kind of what this course is about. Um, there are some interesting readings that you're going to want to look at, um, at, maybe even before the, the first week. Um, and they are, if you, this is, this is the syllabus, if you hot link, it has hot links here, but I'll post those documents on the front page as well. Um, read these. They are um, hot linked to them and um, one of them is the World Health Organization document. Um, it's a document that is the authors are the authors of the text that we're going to be do, doing, Marmo and Wilkinson on the social determinants of health. Um, it's a nice succinct summary of, of the perspective on health from the social determinant standpoint. Um, we're going to be, and, and to the extent that we measure, there's going to be a consumer of statistics. We're not going to do statistics in this class, but you're going to be re reading scores of papers and seeing how people measure these things and think about them conceptually in the literature. So you'll be a consumer of statistics, learn how to read tables and that sort of thing with respect to this theme. And we're going to be doing echometrics, measuring the ecological influence uh, uh, on health outcomes, population-based health outcomes. You and I are population-based diagnosticians. Uh, medical professionals are individual-based um, diagnosticians. We're taking the population standpoint here, and uh, you'll see more about the logic of that as we go through the semester. Up, also up there on, on the front page, besides the syllabus and some links that you can do for your reading, is a is a PowerPoint presentation called the Social Ecology of Health. Um, ecology is just like uh, you know, if here in San Antonio, I'm speaking to you from the Lake Campus. Uh, we have Elmendorf Lake. The flora and the fauna are in that ecological niche, and so are we, faculty, staff, administrators, and all. We're all part of that lake environment, so we are in that niche as well. So we're looking at the ecological dynamics of neighborhoods other kinds of uh, geographic and contextual contexts that influence um, population health in this course. Um, so take a look at that PowerPoint and you'll get some ideas, some good visuals and some dynamics and some relationships and principles that will be uh, that will elaborate as we go through the semester. There's also a diagram, a one-page diagram up there that's got arrows on it, talks about the context, influencing behavior, influencing uh, profile and, and doing upstream, downstream and that sort of thing. It's a nice one-page visualization. Take a look at it. You'll see it in that PowerPoint um, as well. That'd be a good way uh, to get started and um, you'll see in the syllabus the introduction of the text is another way, uh, introductory chapter of the text is another good way to get started. Okay, the, um, the uh, learning outcomes. Um, the principal one is the sociological imagination and um, that is just another way of talking about the social contextual perspective of sociology on human behavior. Uh, imagine, if you will, me for example, how much of who I am is a product of my family context, my gender context, uh, my ethnic racial context, the context of the 40s when I was born and all the 60 years in between. Um, how much of who we are, how much of our personal narrative is a reflection of the context we pass through and are currently in. So uh, that's what that's about. Having that kind of an imagination, being able to visualize contextual influences, in our case in this course, um, in influences on um, health. That's what the echometrics about. How to measure as best we can um, that contextual ecological influence on health. Echometrics. Um, the other two major ones are about sociological methods um, and we'll talk more about those as we go through the semester. 
and then the um, course specific outcomes um, you'll see there uh, you'll be able to understand and explain why there's variation on any particular health theme across an urban environment why are some in a better situation health wise than others uh, be able to explore understand that whole dynamic and describe it and explain it and in a nutshell is what those uh, uh, learning outcomes are about and we'll talk more about them in the next video the way the course is um, well, let's talk about let's talk about um, the requirements. I've got my pages here somewhere. Here we are. Um, course requirements. You'll be doing four papers, small papers, one for each segment, and I'll talk about the segments here in a minute. Um, you'll do these papers. Pick a topic uh, that's of interest to you, or rather, an article from a set of readings for that particular segment. Read it. Summarize it. Present it in writing, publishable for all your colleagues and me to read, and hopefully to further the discussion on that particular theme, each of you will do that, have one of those papers, and present it online uh, every segment over the course of the semester, and there are four segments. Participation and discussion on Blackboard, that uh, rates about 30, 40 percent. It's important, I think. Um, your attendance is measured by your participation, your frequency, that you'll see in the syllabus there's a scale of frequency. But more than that, there is also a scale of substantive participation. Um, it's not just about, hey, I, th I think your idea is cool, well, that's good. But why is it cool? What's your rationale? What are you, what are you, what are you going to say about some particular topic as you begin your dialogue? Imagine we're sitting around a table in a seminar, an undergraduate classroom, and having that kind of dialogue and conversation. That's the way I want that discussion to go. So your participation is substantive. And you'll see on the syllabus what I mean by that. And there's this rubric that I use to assess uh, your participation. That rubric is also posted on Blackboard. There is a, uh, a comprehensive essay at the end. Um, it will be an integrative essay that will take the four segments, the themes of the segments, and put them into a single essay on a topic of your choice, and I'll help you work through whatever topic you'd like to do, and, um, and then put that essay together, demonstrate how you can take the theme of social determinants around some issue of health, and put it all together, and maybe make some recommendations about uh, ways to change context to improve health. So um, I think you'll find these three ways of measuring meaningful in terms of what we want to accomplish. Now let me speak for a moment in closing about the segments. What you see here is a whiteboard and um, you'll see it regularly. I don't know that I'll do a video like this and then a whiteboard video but probably integrate them in some way. But I'll use a mark a lot to do some illustrations. Um, uh, pictures worth a thousand words uh, to do some illustrations here. Um, but uh, one way that I think we'll think about the segment here, the segments, the first segment is demography and uh, demographic outcomes. And really, in terms of health, a, uh, a very common standard way of measuring health outcomes are things that have to do with fertility, like uh, birth outcomes and birth weight and that sort of thing, and things that have to do with mortality, like death rates and that sort of thing, and then things that have to do with migration. Uh, people that come from, say, Mexico with a higher fertility rate, total fertility rate numbers of children per woman, come into the United States, bring their fertility, and then as they become integrated economically, their fertility behavior begins to change, and um, and that sort of thing. How? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We want to look at demographic outcomes as ways to measure co contextual influences on health because health is most often measured by demographic measures. Uh, low birth weight, high birth weight, uh, types of mortality, years of life expectancy, average years lived, and all of that. Those are our outcomes of interest that we'll look to understand uh, the impact of context on health. Um, so the first segment is about understanding demographic um, components of change, fertility, mortality, and migration. The second component is about income inequality. Uh, one might surmise that because in countries that have high inequality, some people are at a distinct disadvantage, and we know that to be the case in our own society. Um, even if you were, uh, you know, you were to think about a Charles Dickinson's novel in, uh, in England in the 1850s, you would know what I mean. But we're not that far different from that in terms of our own concern about health disparities and inequality. The idea about the in income inequality is that those 
who have a lot of income are doing better health-wise than those who don't have a lot of income. And so, <coughs> excuse me, we'll explore that in some depth. And then we'll go to the next level and we'll think about, well, it's not so much about the income inequality, it's about the lack of cohesion. The more unequal we are, the less we get along well. The less we get along well, the less cohesion we have, the more stress we have. The more stress we have, the more our autoimmune systems are impaired. The more they're impaired, the more susceptible we are to microbials and other things out there, the more likely we are to get ill and then possibly die. So we're going to look at social cohesion as a third segment and social capital. Much like I have dollars here in my uh, pocket, uh, I can take that and capitalize and go down to the cafeteria and get something to eat. Much like your human capital getting a college degree, um, with your human capital you hope to capitalize on that and get a, uh, a better uh, job or a good job when you get out of university. Human capital or um, um, social capital is a neighborhood that's highly cohesive or cohesive and it can capitalize on its internal dynamic and represent itself say to the mayor's office and get better lighting on the streets and that sort of thing. So we'll talk about that and then we'll discover the last segment is about network. Cohesion is about the fabric of society. It's the network, the how the degrees of interaction and networking that we have that hold the whole thing together. So we'll spend the last segment on that. So that's pretty much what we're about. And um, I'm looking forward to this. I think you'll find this a very interesting course. If you're going, if you're thinking about medical school or uh, health professional school or health career, which this course is designed to help you do, um, social sciences are now in the medical college admissions test, highly emphasized for admission to medical school, particularly sociology, particularly uh, the understanding of contextual influences on health. So you're in a good place. And even if you're not going that route, you're in a good place anyway. You're going to like this course. I look forward to working with you and uh, talk to you in a couple of weeks.